In the previous video, we talked about array and curve tools. I want to expand on that a little bit more in terms of how else you can use the array and uh, something called modifier stacking or mod stacking, uh, where you can start generating even more complex looking structures or models uh, using very small components. So for this example, I always like to use very basic looking things just to show that uh, the, the, the foundational elements of this. So we'll do Shift A and we're going to add a cube and we're going to add a modifier array. And we've talked about the relative offset, constant offset. But for this demonstration, I'm just going to use a relative offset with a count of four. Uh, you can do anything you want here. Now let's add another array. And you can see we have now duplicated this array, and we can kind of keep doing it this way. So we can start breaking it up a bit more, like in interesting shapes. We can also change this. So if you want just some slight offset, sometimes I find if we keep using the same array, so let's say we have the set of four, but we keep going bigger and bigger, it kind of, like, to me, it just... It's nice to just have that slight error every now and then. Uh, it makes it more natural in my eyes. So we just have it like slightly offset like that. All right, but we can actually change this. So instead of going factor of X, we can do factor of Y. And now you can see what's happening here is we can start building rather cool structures this way. So we can have it like that. What happens if we then add another array? So let's do another array. Okay, we can go this way now, but instead, let's do it up. So now we can build it up this way. Two, three. However, remember that everything is just based on a cube. So if we go to the cube, check what happens when I scale this up and down. Now, remember we talked about the relative offset and constant offset. You can probably tell which one, which arrays need what. So let's say we just add this here and just add just some um, break break up here just to add some cool complexity. Let's bring this down here. Like that. Just to give an interesting read like this. And then that should be it for now. Okay. So you can see we have this really cool structure. Well, I can tell you right off, we don't need the Z or Z array at relative offset. It's much more preferable to have it in constant. So zero, bring this up, so then it'll always stay at this height. And what else do we not need? I think that might be it. So like if we add another one, you can see it's adding this way. Two, so let's see. We want the array to be groups of four. It's always handy. You can click on this and name them as well. And so this one, I believe, is to the side, which is the y-axis. Y-axis. This is x-axis. And this is z-axis. So we can clump those like that. We can add another array. And this is why I talk about having these like nice breakups every now and then. So two, three, you can see here, we've added another cool looking thing like that. And now we're building a rather complex looking structure. So we've added three, 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 three. Everything here looks kind of cool. Let's just do a whole array. And if we go here, we, let's see what happens if we add like a cross beam. Oh, well, you can see here now that we need the Y axis to be at a constant offset. But notice that this thing is acting a little odd. It's facing this way. The reason for that is we're arraying it. What happens if we want it flipped around and hitting this area? Well, we can completely remove the Y axis and have a mirror modifier instead. Uh, the reason why I wanted to walk you through this, there might be some cases where you do like it having it face this way. And then, uh, yeah, we can use the... Uh, Y modifier mirror. But uh, let me just hide this for now because I, I could show you some use cases for this. And let's go into mirror and let's just do Y. And now you can see, like, oh, it's kind of facing the weird way. Hmm, not very desirable. 
However, you can see there's something called mirror object. Well, kind of similar to our array, if you do shift A in object mode to add an empty, we can use this as a reference for the mirror modifier. So we click on this, click on this, and now we can drag this out or drag this in. And we're starting to add really some cool complexities to our shape. Now I talked about um, the other modifier here that we hit away. So now if we do this, look what's happening. It's actually mirroring both ways and we're starting to get some really cool complex shapes. Because we're mirroring the modifier. So like this is what it would look like like this because we arrayed the whole set. But if we moved it, we have this kind of cool, already complex looking structure. Um, what else can we do from here? Well, you can also like mirror it any way you want. You can also, uh, scaling doesn't do anything, but you can rotate it around, you can do anything you need with this to create complex structures really fast. Okay, so we have this. This is kind of cool looking. Um, what else can we do? Well, what happens if we wanted the beams to come across this way instead? Well, we can go in and we can add that. Again, I'm only extruding this object, but you can actually add in any other object you want here. Like I can add this in to create a beam, but you can see, oh, it's moving far away and I want them connected. And this is on the X axis. Uh, quick note, I can tell what the axes are just because this is green, which is over here. You can see this little gizmo, Y, X, and Z. So it's very, very handy to reference this uh, and look at the line here. So, okay. And also good to label stuff. So um, relative offset was two. Let's get rid of that constant offset. Let's say two. That doesn't look as good as I want it to. So let's say maybe the distances will be eight. Yes, eight. Just random arbitrary. Okay. So we'll bring this down here. And let's just, sure. And then we'll inset this and extrude this outside. And connect it. I kind of just want to mirror this, actually. Or just uh, duplicate it. Oh. And there we go, like that. And then we can do this, oh. this, and just again breaking up shapes. I just want to show like how simple some of these models can get. And just break it up like that. So now look at the structure we've actually started building. We can go back into our structure over here. And let's just break this up a bit more. Maybe like that. And let's click on these and move it forward. Now we create like little walkways up. Look how complex this looks already. And all it is is just our model. Let me just duplicate this. And, oh, separate, selection. Move this out. And let's just uh, delete all the modifiers. And so this is what our piece actually just looks like. It's just this this quarter piece. We, this is all the modeling we've done. And just from this structure, we've generated this rather cool, almost brutalist look. Cheese grater, brutalist look. From here, we can start adding different modifiers. And you know, I can start like uh, riffing a bit in terms of like how this should look. But uh, hopefully, this is time to open up your eyes and creativity in terms of like how complex you can get with just simple modifiers. So we have this structure here. If I just add a light, oh, no, I keep putting spotlight, um, sunlight, and let's turn this on. You can see we get some rather cool compositions already just using this. Now there are auto -mod uh, other modifiers you can add that'll make the lighting way faster, more beautiful. But if you're just kind of like concepting really fast, you can have something like this. Uh, just to show you too, I personally like using Workbench. I'm just going to do this really fast here. Um, shadow. And this is almost like a sketch, uh, sketch up uh, look. So look at that. We have this really cool look that we can start using. And, you know, your concept art, like here, you can put some put someone to scale here, and put them over here, random person scale, you can, and also like scale is important because like if I had, you know, let's say this here is a person, 
like this doesn't look as big, but look what happens as soon as you start shrinking them. This whole structure becomes monolithic in size. We keep shrinking, shrinking, shrinking. Now this is this is gargantuan. It's massive. Uh, anyway, yeah. Hopefully that's helpful.